Hey guys, welcome to another supporting tutorial for Lychee Pro. Welcome back to iPrint 3D, the official channel of Print My Mini. Let's get right into this. This is a pretty little dark elf from M3DM's library. We sell this on our site if you want for yourself. I'll put a link in the description below. She's a small miniature, as you can see, about what, 33 plus millimeter there. Let's go ahead and lift and tilt the model a bit here. It's a decent orientation. Alright, let's add a raft. And of course, islands first. We're going to use a custom light size because this miniature is small. Uh, using a slightly smaller diameter, slightly smaller tip. Alright, let's just go ahead and do the island search. Let's see what this gives us back. The islands on this one are pretty straightforward. Uh, just want to make sure not to cluster too many things together. And if you do have to move some apart placement wise, sometimes it does, doesn't let you place them where you want. Don't be afraid to get in there and use the advanced tab and um, move those things around a little bit. They're adjustable for a reason, folks. If you want your prints to come out good, this is definitely a key thing you need to get on. Using the advanced supporting system is very important. This is a really cool model. It does need some good supporting to get those little horns right and stuff. So we need to make sure she comes out with little to no damage. She's pretty small, so the little details will matter a lot on something this size. Uh, the islands on this one are pretty straightforward though. Again, like I said before, it's pretty straightforward. Not too many tight inner areas. She's actually built really well for 3D printing. I don't really love to do contact to contact points, so I avoid that if I can. Uh, if it can be avoided, I will do it. A lot of these techniques are just from trial and error. You see what works best for removal, warping reduction, etc. And of course the hands are always a tricky part as we'll come around to that in a minute. Uh, I just adjust this a little bit here. And there we go. That looks better. Now this is interesting. You see how I supported the one island and, and Lychee thinks the other one's gone or dealt with? It's not. It needs a mini support or at least something to connect it to the other piece. Otherwise it's not going to work right. Yeah, these are places where you can do contact to contact points. It's not so terrible. Like that finger there might, you know, I could do it that way. But that can actually handle a larger segment because of its location. I'm going to try and actually support the end tip here. And then I'm going to do some micro supports or mini supports rather from there to there and stretch a little fan of um, mini supports that are going to kind of help support uh, the hand. Whereas I've got the actual tip connected to her and then the mini tips are connected to the fingers. So much better combination of support rather than uh, trying to put too much stress on the fingers and then, you know, we wind up with lost fingers. Not this time. Alright, so we'll finish the islands up and then move right into the supporting main areas of the model as well.
And we've got looks like two left, three left. And this, if that's an island on the left, more than likely it's going to be an island on the other side. Keep that in mind. I don't know why Lychee decides sometimes that one side's going to have the problem, the other side isn't. Now maybe there isn't perfect symmetry there in the model, but I'm thinking more than likely there needs to be some level of support being put under this piece of hair uh, in order to prevent that from disappearing entirely. So I'm just going to put a little micro support there. And we have one more island on the shoulder. And again, I feel like we're we're gonna you're gonna have an island on both sides. I don't like that on the other side for some reason, but oh no, that's actually okay. I mean, that's that's interesting. Alright, let's go ahead and make sure and save that work now. And we're good on the islands. We can start adding main supports, but let's look at the way this builds up too as we kind of work on the main supports. Um, the feet uh, at an angle to reduce force, so each foot needs a decent amount of supports, especially since we're using super light supports in this case. Because we want this model to just break free from the supports without any damage whatsoever, so we want those tips to just be barely connecting but the sheer number of them will pre prevent this model from slipping into the abyss there's a little gap there i'm probably going to have to address Of course, always make sure there are a few support tips or at least one good solid one touching the initial parts of the print as they print. Otherwise, this is where pancaking will tend to happen, flattening, as some people will call it, or just plain failures, as the model will just peel itself off because it gets to a point where there isn't enough supporting left to actually keep it on the build plate anymore. And that's a more common issue than folks think especially when you're starting out doing this you really don't know um, if you use the auto supporting function it, it'll probably get your model printed but you're going to wind up with so many additional supports and damage on your model especially if you're using default settings they're way too yeah they're just way too conducive to create damage i i remember you know when i started myself trying to use those functions it's it, it's it's a nightmare and that's why I try to make some of these videos so I can educate folks on how I do it and how I've kind of learned how to do it and how I've different techniques from different folks. Oh, don't forget the yellowed areas. That's an important fact. Always when you're working on supporting, 40 degree angles are present or greater, obviously, in those yellow areas, yellow areas because that is where the most supporting would be necessary uh, make sure and support those areas and they are very suitable for that which is again why uh, the software indicates them and of course just work your way around the model supporting the areas that need them uh, just make sure you have good contact points you can use that use the slider to ensure the contact points as you see each group of supports as they connect to the physical parts of the model first so on the one foot we have a couple tips that are making contact with that piece and on the other foot we're not seeing that yet so
All right, we just want to make sure and continue work on where those contact points are going. And we do have a little bit of a space between the segments of supports there underneath. So I told you there's a gap there I'm going to fix. This is what I'm talking about. If you go underneath, you'll see there's a decent amount of space there that gets printed between what's supported and what isn't. And I would prefer there be an extra tip between that length and the other side because I think that will just help that to build a better connection point there as it prints off the plate. Now the reason I focus so much on this area is because of the fact that it is the initial point of contact. So this is more important in my opinion because this is what's going to initially connect to the plate and this is what's going to make the whole print survive or not. So again, it's very important to pay attention to. And of course I want this support to line up a little bit better with the bottom and it doesn't want to behave. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And that way the depth won't affect anything. So. And now you'll see we've got some more supporting in between that gap. Now it's not perfect. It's not even ideal. I probably just go back and delete a couple of supports and maybe re-row that. But honestly, that'll work fine just like that. So if you see that your supporting isn't exactly the most pretty thing to look at, don't hate yourself for it. You know, there's times where sometimes it just needs to be functional, not pretty. Just make sure that where you have your points there that you, you know that there's going to be enough building up as well. So as you added the rest of your supports, even though your main points of contact are important. Um, make sure obviously your islands are supported. Make sure uh, the other fragile bits are supported lightly. Always use mini supports where possible on things like fingertips. Um, things like the capes where you see there's a big gap there that's going to be added without supports underneath it. Go ahead and add a couple supports in there just to balance out that cape because that's definitely going to either fail, pancake, something is going to go wrong with that. It's just way too much plastic being cured there in between one support and the other. So it's, it's just important to make note of those things. So you, you can see that pretty well with the slider as you go up and down there. And that is the most important thing to note. Use that slider to your advantage. You can see the slices of the 3D print as your printer is going to print it and it most really I think that's most important to kind of note is it really gives you an idea of how the printer does what it does and it kind of gives you a better idea of how to go ahead and go in there and support the model as to what's going to be the best part to support as it prints and how that needs to be supported again there is some trial and error you know I've learned a lot from doing it myself I've watched a lot of videos I've learned from some other folks that have definitely done a lot more than I have in my life for 3D printing. And uh, I'm grateful that they've shared their knowledge and I walked away a very, very uh, healthy, knowledge person in this uh, topic. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding some feather light, feather, feather, feather light tips in there, middle mini supports that are connecting to the shoe bottoms as well to give it a little bit of spring uh, in those little supports in case there is any disconnect or any possible disconnect. Those are actually pretty tough. So those will actually do quite a lot. They'll help the uh, uh, pressure reduce a little bit on the build plate uh, FEP connection so you, you don't have uh, as much of a chance of a snap off. And again, just want to make sure you get good points of contact. You don't want them to uh, inch into the actual model where you're getting pieces of the model that are going to come off. We want these supports to be easy to remove. You want to be able to just go in there, pretty much squeeze them, twist them off, and just pop them off. You don't want to have to fight with it. You certainly don't want to have to get the wire snips out and start clipping them. That's a pain in the butt. I can't stand doing that. I will if I have to, especially on delicate parts, but 
I'd rather not to. It just takes a lot more time. A couple more little things we need to finish up. And listen, I want to take a moment just to thank you guys for checking out the channel. I hope these videos are teaching you something. I hope there's something that you get out of them. And uh, if there is, leave a comment, subscribe, give us a like. It really helps the channel out. We're trying to build up the, uh, the subscriber base. And um, we really could use the support. So again, we appreciate it if you're watching us. Thanks a lot. And uh, tell your friends. And again, all I'm doing here is I'm just going up and down the slices and seeing as each slice goes where I need to add my points. I want to actually take another minute here to mention that uh, we do have a free shipping offer available on our main website, printmymini.com. The Etsy shop does not offer free shipping. We have a completely different thing going on there. We also have a larger catalog on the Etsy store than we do on our main site because of just the uh, different ways that our shopping carts work and the order systems on both. But if you're interested in taking us up on the free shipping order, check out our main website, printmymini.com. We do offer a pretty wide variety of stuff. We have models from Crippled God Foundry, we have models from M3DM, and we have digital dark pinups as well. Um, and we're looking to acquire some additional stuff as the months go on. And we've got some cool stuff up there for Halloween, both on our site and the Etsy store as well. So do check us out. If you do check us out on the Etsy store, we appreciate you just as much. Um, in fact, we'll even throw in a free mini uh, or two if you place an order regardless of where you buy so you're always going to get something cool from us that pretty much wraps up most of the supporting um, there might be some fine details here, maybe some bracings that I'm going to add. Honestly, yeah, we'll do a little maybe back brace just to give it a little extra support in the rear. That should be enough. Perfect. All right, I would say she's ready to go. Now, what I like to do at the end is usually I'll do one more island search just to make sure I did not delete or remove any islands during the process, which I don't think I did, but I'll give it one more sweep just to make sure. This will ensure we don't miss anything important before we export the file. I advise doing this even if you think you've really done a thorough job. We all make mistakes. We can all miss something. We can delete something or undo. Sometimes the software is just finicky and they just disappear. So. This one's ready to go though. We'll go ahead and give this an export. And we're done. Oh, of course, we need to uh, you know, set up the appropriate printer for this particular print.
Anyway, thanks so much, guys. Again, really do appreciate you watching. Hope you got something from this. Leave a like, sub, comment. You know the deal. See you all soon. Thanks for watching.